Hi everybody. It is Sunday morning and my medication actually arrived a day early. I wasn't expecting it until tomorrow, but it showed up at 9 o'clock Sunday morning. So I'm going to get in there and get the tank medicated today, but I've got to turn the lights out on this tank when I do it. So I wanted to talk about it briefly before we get started, rather than sit here and look at either a dark tank or look at some other fish tank. We're going to look at this one for a moment uh, while we talk about the medication. So what I've got going on in here is I've got a couple of skinny loaches. And one is really skinny. In fact, it's so skinny I don't know if it's going to be able to recover or not. That is the one in question right there. I've got another one that is noticeably skinny. That's my medium-sized loach. And then the largest of them doesn't look like it's got any issues going on whatsoever, which is this one right here. Now, just because it doesn't look like it's got any issues doesn't mean it doesn't. If I've got parasites in the guts of the loaches, which is what typically causes this sort of wasting disease, this skinny loach disease as it's often called, that is more than likely a gut parasite. And the medication that I'm going to use to treat it is levamisole, and in this case I'm using levamisole hydrochloride, which is soluble in water. I tried the levamisole flakes, but I couldn't get the fish to eat them. I tried Max Shield, but that's hit or miss. I think the fish were eating some of it. I know the other fish were eating the Max Shield. I just don't know if the fish I wanted to eat the Max Shield were eating it. And so my last resort is just to medicate the whole tank. I've been doing some research on this. There's a lot of misinformation out there. Uh, a lot of people say that you can't use the levamisole in the tank as a bath type treatment. You know, you can't treat the whole tank because it does not absorb through the fish's skin. And apparently it does absorb through the fish's skin. I've done a lot of research about this. The medical... Um, community it's all you know it's basically the people on the forums that say it doesn't uh professionals say it does so i'm going to go with the professionals not the forums and i also wanted to point out that there are different forms of the levamisole that you can use and so you really need to check with the msds or i think it's just called the safety data sheet now but look up the product and the brand you're using find out if there's any additional medications, even if there's an additional um, filler agents. You just never know what's in a medication until you look it up. So double check. I looked up this. This is what I'm using. It's levamisole hydrochloride. It is a drench powder. This is meant to just basically pour over the backs of sheep and cattle. And it is basically just levamisole hydrochloride. It's exactly what I need, even though it's being sold for sheep and cattle. But the dosage is what's going to be really important on this tank. And I've looked it up, I've done the calculations, and I need one gram of this, or a thousand milligrams. Actually, I need a little less than that, but I'm just going to round it up to one gram. Um, it is possible to overdose, and you can actually kill fish, but the lethal dosage for fish over a 24-hour period is 250 milligrams per liter. So I'm only adding two milligrams per liter. So when I say, you know, just less than a gram, if I do a full gram, the tiny, tiny little extra amount we're talking about is not going to put me anywhere near overdose capacity. Remember, 250 milliliters per liter. I'm sorry, 250 milligrams per liter. That's literally one gram per gallon of water more or less I'm only putting one gram in 125 gallons of water so I'm not coming anywhere near the neighborhood of approaching the possibility of overdosing these fish by just sort of rounding it up to a gram so don't worry about that I'm certainly not going to and I guess that's really all there is to say about it we're gonna put the treatment in we're gonna give it a day or two and then we're going to do a really big water change and we're going to gravel vac as best I can with this tank. I can't gravel vac very thoroughly. But the idea is the parasites that are living within the fish do not get killed, but they simply get paralyzed by the medication. And once they're paralyzed, the fish will simply pass them through 
and they'll be back in the tank, but they'll still be alive. This does not kill them. It simply paralyzes them and allows the fish to pass them out. And so at that point, they need to either stay paralyzed long enough that they aren't able to reinfect, or they need to be simply removed from the tank. And so the gravel vacuuming is an important part of this process. It's supposed to be left for a day or two, and then you do the big water change, filter and all that good stuff, and then you give it a day uh, or two, and then you give another treatment. I'm sorry, you give it a few weeks, and then you give it another treatment, because this also does not affect eggs. So any eggs that any of these parasites have already laid will not be affected, and they will still continue to grow and develop. And when they hatch, I'll have a whole new batch of parasites in the tank. And so it's important once you've done this treatment, you've got to come back after a couple of weeks and do another treatment. And the article I was reading that I got the most information out of actually recommended coming back maybe a month later after that second treatment and doing a third treatment just to really make sure you cleaned it out. So there's some people that do this every you know year, year and a half just to keep on top of it in case anything got introduced into their tanks. You know, that almost doesn't sound like a bad idea because I've had these loaches for years and years and I have no idea how they developed this disease or they got this parasite after being in my tanks. If I brought them home with that parasite, then it is the world's slowest killing parasite because I've had these loaches for years and they're just now, the two of them are starting to get really skinny. The one has always looked a little thin. But it's getting to the point now where it's getting ridiculous. So again, if it is a parasite that's doing it, it's a parasite that I either picked up fairly recently or it's a parasite that takes years and years and years in order to kill the fish off. So again, maybe the idea of once a year just dosing the tank just to make sure there's nothing in there. I don't know. I always go with the mentality of, you know, I don't add medication unless there's a reason to. But I don't know. We'll see. Anyway... That's going to be this morning's video. I'm not really going to do a whole lot of, you know, I'm basically just going to mix a gram of this into some water, pour it in the tank, and then turn the light out. So I don't really need to do that part on video. So for the next few days, we're going to have one dark tank here in the room. And then uh, after that, we'll see where we go. So thanks for watching this one. Make sure you subscribe. You don't want to miss any of the updates. Wish me luck. Hope I get these loaches sorted out. And I will see you real soon on the next one. Thanks for watching this one. All right, everybody. The deed is done. The tank is darkened. It's not blacked out necessarily. I don't have a drop cloth over the whole thing to keep any external light from shining into the tank. So those fish are actually glowing like that just because of external light. The tank is completely unlit on its own at this point. So I did actually remember one final point I wanted to make about this medication that I'm using. It is a common um, thread out there to say that the levamisole hydrochloride will not work if you do a bath in water that has a higher pH. You have to have a pH below 7 in order for the levamisole hydrochloride to be effective. And that is not true. The only time that the levamisole is affected by pH is in its base form. Once it has been combined with the hydrochloride, it is stable through all ranges of pH, so you can use it in any tank water, whether you've got high pH or low pH, as long as you're using the um, Levamisol hydrochloride. If you're just using a base form, then yes, you need to have pH below 7, but if you're using the hydrochloride, any pH will work, and typically it's the hydrochloride that we put in when we do baths, so don't worry about the pH when you're doing a Levamisol bath. So there's my three loaches down there. I'm going to be keeping an eye on them over the next couple hours. It recommends, you know, once you put the medication in the tank to keep an eye on it to make sure none of the fish have any kind of adverse reactions. If we can get through the next hour or two without anybody freaking out, then we should be good to go for the next couple days. So there you go, everybody. Those are my final thoughts on what's going on in the tank here. Remember, you don't need a pH below 7 if you were using the Levamisole hydrochloride. It is recommended, however, to turn the lights out, and of course, if you have a UV sterilizer, you want to turn your UV sterilizer off, and if you're running carbon in your filters, which I do not, but if you are running carbon in your filters, of course, you want to take your carbon out of your filters before you run any kind of medication through your tank anyway. 
So there you go, everybody. Once again, I'm going to say thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe, and don't forget this is my 125-gallon tank. So thanks again, and I'll see you real soon in the next one.